Mutual fund wholesaling can be a pretty good gig for the right person. I think that role has changed a lot in the last few years, so let's talk about that. A financial advisor I know when I was looking to get into the industry actually told me not to pursue that directly, but to rather start out trying to be an internal and then an external mutual fund wholesaler. And I didn't think that was the right path for me, but that just tells you that other people have recommended it. The term wholesaler in the investment industry refers to a salesperson. It's a representative that works on behalf of a company that issues investment products, usually mutual funds, sometimes ETFs or separate accounts. And that salesperson creates relationships with financial advisors or brokers who sell those products to clients to hopefully have that advisor or broker sell the investment products that they represent, either mutual funds, ETFs, whatever, to their clients to create business for the company that they work for. There are many roles that someone could work in in the departments at a mutual fund company in which they call distribution. But for this video, we'll focus on talking about internal wholesalers and external wholesalers. The internal wholesaler is more of a junior role. I know this is a pretty popular role for recent college graduates. You go work for John Hancock or Fidelity or some other mutual fund company, and you work at a desk at the corporate office or at some other satellite office. You work on behalf of one specific external wholesaler, which is a traveling salesperson going to different financial advisors offices. Your job is to support that salesperson, either building reports for the meetings they have that day or prepping sales material for them to present to their clients, other, th other office related tasks relevant to the sales process. This is the role that I mentioned a financial advisor who I knew when I was hoping to get into the industry mentioned to me as something that I should potentially pursue. The more I learned about it, the less I wanted to do it myself just because of what the role pertained. That doesn't mean it can't be a cool job and if you wanted to be an external wholesaler, which is the role that this one would lead to, you of course have to start there. The external wholesaler then is the individual who usually drives around and in this day and age calls or sets up video meetings with brokers and financial advisors to tout the investments of their company that they represent, why they think they're good, why they think they're better than their competitors' investment options, and you know obviously are trying to get that advisor or broker to utilize some of their investments because they're paid based on uh, sales. Working at a financial planning and investment management office, we have a lot of contact from mutual fund wholesalers. We respond to some of that contact. You know, they're salespeople. They have to be persistent. That's a part of their job. I think some internals actually get paid based on the amount of minutes or hours they spend on the phone with financial advisors. And so they're always trying to strike up conversations, always trying to get in your ear about things. Some of those conversations are very good though, and they can be helpful for someone in my position building portfolios for clients. I haven't done it myself, but I can tell you a little bit about how that role has changed in the past few years and who it might be right for. I typically find the wholesalers to be really honest about what specific investments they're trying to sell that are worth it and which aren't. Say you're talking to a wholesaler from Oppenheimer, now Invesco Group, that mutual fund company could have 50 funds that they sell, but the wholesaler's not gonna try to tell you about all 50. Some of them do, but not many of them. The good ones definitely won't. They're gonna tell you about the two or three, maybe four or five that are really competitive that they offer, that are potentially hopefully beating benchmarks and definitely beating their peers, so that you know it's not a waste of their time. They're gonna put things in front of you that you might actually wanna use with clients. When I say you, I mean financial advisors. And you know, for themselves, they get paid by assets that come into their mutual funds in their region. External wholesalers can earn like 500,000 or more per year just based on the region that they're working in, normally like the big money regions like the state of New York will be paid better. If you're a wholesaler with the entire East Coast region, that would be certainly a high income earning uh, demographic of the country because there are a lot of investors working with financial advisors and uh, RAs and investment management offices who have a lot of money in that area. Some wholesalers are more knowledgeable than others. The good ones will focus on their top few funds like I mentioned. The great ones will break it down for you on where where the strengths and weaknesses are of those exact funds and kind of save you, when I say you again, the advisor or the person building portfolios, save you the time in having to comb through all the fine details about the funds and hopefully they'll put those things out front to you right on the table during the conversation because you're going to figure those things out anyway assuming you're doing the proper due diligence so it's much appreciated when they will give you the pros and cons of even their best offerings they usually know some economics and especially can at least communicate the economic outlooks from the firms that they represent the way my firm does it is once a quarter we'll pick a day where we'll meet with like five or six wholesalers and so that helps us for a couple of reasons all the advisors in our group kind of hear the same information but also we hear a lot of different perspectives on where the economy and markets are at and where they think they might be heading from many of the biggest fund companies out there, which 
kind of just broadens our horizon and prevents only following a couple sources for your information. It just gives a good perspective. But they're still salespeople and they still are there to get you to invest your clients dollars in their funds. I don't love working with them, to be honest, because I see part of their role and I'm sure a lot of them see part of their role as making them like you which is a translation for creating a conflict of interest. In any case where a financial advisor has ever sat down and look at two investment offerings that they want to be using with their clients that are pretty similar, but they've said, you know, between A and B, oh, well, I like the person that works at B company. I'm going to use that fund. That's not a prudent way to make investment decisions that, you know, you chose it based on a personal relationship. That is a conflict of interest that the wholesaler planted in your mind. And that would be a win from the wholesaler's perspective, right? Because they won your business by being nice to you or supporting events. They can sponsor you. They can pay you money for events you're putting on. They can take you on golf trips, things like that. They have limits to that. But if you're an advisor who uses all Fidelity funds or something, Fidelity has a huge budget to funnel a lot of money back towards you. And so that's why I say they can create a big conflict of interest. I question this industry a little bit for that reason. Again, a lot of them are great people. They're knowledgeable. They give you good information but they're also selling you something. If you're an advisor and you wanna make the most unbiased and effective decisions possible, you don't want any outside factors influencing your decision-making and that's what they are trying to do. They're trying to influence that decision-making. Now, if you really can't find this information on their mutual funds out there, then the fund company's doing a bad job at publishing either through Morningstar or whatever tool you're using. So you really should be able to get all the information you need that the fund wholesaler is gonna give you anyway on your own. To say that you need to be meeting with wholesalers to me sounds like you want to be wine and dined and go out to all the lunches and dinners and whatever. I mentioned internal wholesaling can lead to external wholesaling, which can be a very high income job. Internal wholesaling can also lead directly to asset management within that fund company. This is not the traditional route, so I wouldn't tell people who want to be mutual fund managers someday to start out as an internal wholesaler, but I know of two individuals specifically that I worked with, not directly, but they were uh, our internal wholesaler contact for some mutual fund companies that we used funds through for a couple years as they were working on their CFA charter. And I would kind of talk with them whenever I talk to them every quarter, every six months and say, hey, how are you doing with the CFA? I was studying at the time too, they asked me how I'm doing. Two of those individuals that I know of that were internal mutual fund wholesalers passed the CFA and they were able to secure analyst roles in the companies for which they were once selling those funds. Now, you know, they're picking the investments in those funds. So it can be a way in, which might be a great advantage to some people. Another point to note might be that it seems like a pretty cutthroat industry to me and a lot of places in the finance field are that way. One of the wholesalers I knew that I considered to be very knowledgeable and helpful and happened to be like seven months pregnant at the time. Uh, when there was a merger between two fund companies, the acquiring fund company decided that their existing wholesalers were going to work that specific region that she was working in. I, my office being in that region, so she was fired, you know, canned. That's a sad example of a merger and acquisition creating a loss of jobs for some people. And when one company, not even merging with another, decides to change their regions up, you'll hear cases of like, wholesalers getting fired and then you get a bunch of calls and emails from a new person. Hey, I'm the rep in your region now and they're going to hound you like every week until they actually get through to you to give you an introduction to themselves. I normally ignore most of those calls and emails, like I mentioned, because I feel like I can get all the information I need to help our clients to make portfolios without a salesperson trying to influence that decision making. The reason I say this role has been changing a lot in the last couple of years, and it's been a change for the better, at least from the financial advisor's perspective, is I think a lot of these fund companies are rethinking their sales approach. It's probably not working so well for them anymore to just hand out fact sheets in advisors offices over and over. And the more and more that clients are becoming fee conscious and going away from like commissioned old school, like a share and C share mutual funds and going into ETF portfolios, pretty low fee managed accounts, things like that. Anything that goes into an ETF hurts most wholesalers businesses. Most wholesalers, I think, rep represent mutual funds. Only a handful represent ETF companies. Point is, they're going away from just this bland presentation of, hey, here's our fund, buy it, and then advisors buying those funds. What they're doing now is try to offer you more of a service. That service can take a couple different forms. Most notably, though, it is in portfolio construction. So almost every wholesaler company now is asking us, asking me, because I'm one of the reps on our investment committee, hey, AJ, you know, let me see your model. What, let me see the models you guys are running. We want to do an, a comparison. They'll say, we got a CFA back at the home office that does this all day long. They tell you this great story about why it's the best. Every company does this. I have seen some differences in the reporting that they send back to me, and a few of those have been very helpful. So I'm always open to do these types of things. But my point is that, there's been a serious change in the service offering that wholesalers want to provide. I'm sure that the parent companies that these wholesalers are working for are not pushing them to do this 
just out of the goodness of their heart because they want to help people out. They're for-profit companies and I'm sure that they see a business opportunity here. So probably what they've found is that when you build out these model portfolios with advisors and you can point out the strengths and weaknesses, if you can plug in your fund as a solution to some of those weaknesses, then the advisor is much more likely to use your fund. And, and that's how those conversations generally go. And, and you expect that. Honestly, I like to hear that. If there is a weakness in a model portfolio and there's a way for me to quickly improve on that, I want to hear about it. I don't always agree with what they offer, but they're usually they're knowledgeable people. So I think it's good to do these portfolio review processes with mutual fund wholesaling companies. If you got a wholesaler's perspective on this change, though, they might tell you that their job is a lot different. I'm not sure of this, but I would guess 10 years ago, they spent a lot more of their time like walking up to doors at local offices and just smiling and handshaking and handing them a bag of golf balls, which still happens sometimes. Now they're being asked to do a lot more analytical type work, probably because the industry's moving in that direction, at least I would hope that it is. So I don't know if they're all crazy about that, but it makes it a little bit more fun for us. I've used the term traveling salesperson a couple times now to describe the external wholesaler, and there is a ton of travel. I've heard about these folks that only go home on the weekends, I worked with one wholesaler on a fund that we ended up investing in. He lives in Atlanta. He's like has half the country and he goes home once every other weekend for just uh, Saturday morning to like Sunday afternoon. Then he's gone for another two weeks traveling, usually driving rental cars around. I mean, he'll fly to Regents and then drive around in cars to get to different offices. So really never home. I don't think this is a great job for someone with a family that has to uh, meet some obligations in their home life. It's definitely something you'd want to know if you're considering becoming an internal to hopefully potentially become an external wholesaler, you're gonna be on the road a ton. I'm thinking of a couple other firsthand points I might throw in about what a wholesaler is. And I always think about that they have nice suits. It seems like wholesalers have some kind of minimum expectation in terms of the suit quality that they put on every morning because they always have really nice suits on with like expensive watches and really tight uh, ties with the with the dimple just right. They always look really well dressed. They are really well dressed. Shoes, I've never seen a scuff on a wholesaler's shoes. And they make good money, like I said, but I think they gotta be forced to spend a certain budget on their clothes. Maybe the fun companies provide them because they're always super well dressed because they're salespeople. They wanna look impressive. I'm sure there's a ton of rejection for them. I know as a member of our investment community, the majority of calls and emails we get from wholesalers don't get any response from us. I could spend two hours a day talking to wholesalers. I'm sure they would love the heck out of it. I just wouldn't get as much done myself. So they have to run into that a lot with other people, I'm sure. Probably every 20 phone calls they make, they get someone to pick up or call them back. You have to be okay with dealing with a lot of rejection if you wanted to get into that role, which is probably the case with most sales roles anyway. I could also see regulators cracking down on this position a little bit for some of the reasons I mentioned earlier around creating conflicts of interest. It just doesn't seem like that clean of a of a business to me to be selling. It's, it's almost, I consider it similar to sales reps for pharmaceutical drugs in the United States. Why doesn't the doctor just know of the pharmaceutical drug offerings out there and then have the conversation with the client and make the best recommendation. I see my job similarly. Why shouldn't I just know what investments are performing best out there to recommend those to my clients? Why do I need Pfizer's person and Eli Lilly's person telling me, hey, buy our drug, buy our drug, when I should be doing the independent work on my own? That's just my perspective on it. If financial regulators ever did crack down on the activities that mutual fund wholesalers can partake in, you could see that industry potentially go away completely. I wouldn't be surprised if anyone watches this video in the year 2070 if there's no such thing as mutual fund wholesaling anymore. So that we might be going in that direction, but for now, I think it'll still be a viable a career alternative if you wanted to consider it. It can also be really helpful in kind of hearing some of the financial advisor gossip in your area because they go to most of the offices around, not just through whatever broker deal you might clear through, but they'll try to get into like all the independent offices and everything else. Some will be only assigned to the wirehouses, Morgan Stanley, Merrill Lynch, whatever, but most I think are agnostic towards the firm or the business structure that they're selling to. So anyway, you know, if you want to hear about advisors that are like jumping ship or quitting or really like their job or what investments they're using, the wholesalers can be a good place to get that information. They all kind of know each other. Like, and I mentioned our structure at my firm is we'll have several of them come in during one day. So when one's leaving the lobby and one's coming in, they're always talking it up. It seems like they all get together for some reason, probably just for what I mentioned, passing by in, in lobbies. But I don't know, it's just kind of weird. It seems like a maybe a tight-knit community, even though they're all competing for each other's businesses and sometimes jobs. Let me know if you have any comments down below. Happy to get back to anyone on anything. I always read all through them. And as always, thanks for watching.